If you want to look like Steve McQueen riding a Triumph, it was going to cost you $10,000. Now it's half that with the introduction of the all new Scrambler 400X and Speed 400. There's some key differences that make one a Scrambler, one a Roadster, but they both use the same 398cc single cylinder engine. Let's go for a ride and break down the differences. These bikes are uh, very similar with the same power plant, this uh, 398cc dual overhead cam, single cylinder, liquid cooled engine, four, valves, four valve head. It, they both bikes use that same engine and they uh, make a claimed 39.5 horsepower at 8,000 RPM and 27.7 pound feet of torque at 6,500 RPM. So pretty good for a class or for a, a little single. They're going to be competing with bikes such as G310R and G310GS. And we recently had one of those on our dyno back in uh, California, the, the G310GS. And it made right around 30 horsepower at the rear wheel. So we're uh, just working our way out of Valencia right now. And then we'll uh, be up in some twisty canyon roads. and. Get a little dirt stop at some point as you can see right over there that's the speed 400 so that bike is going to have less suspension travel they both use the same 43 millimeter inverted big piston fork the scrambler that i'm on has uh 5.9 inches somewhere right around there 5.9 inches of suspension travel front and rear where the speed 400 has a little bit less than that i believe it's 5.1 at the rear for the speed 400 and 5.5 something like that 5.6 it also has a rally mode where it disables or i think they call it rally mode or off-road mode we'll play with that once we get in the dirt but it uh it disables traction control and abs which is pretty nice where on the speed 400 you are able to disengage or disable traction control but abs will always be on being it's the roadster the torque curve is pretty flat. The power delivery is pretty linear. Uh, and so that's, you know, good for, you know, riding it in all different conditions, roads, off-road, but also it makes it very usable and friendly for uh, newer entry-level riders. And we're dealing with some morning rush hour here in Valencia, people on their way to work and school. So it'd be nice to uh, see how this bike is for dicing up traffic in an urban landscape. It's got some really light steering. Throttle response is direct, but it's not a, uh, it's, it's smooth. It's direct, but smooth. Just did a photo pass on both bikes. I've spent the majority of our few miles already this morning on the X. And uh, the X has a lot more of an open rider triangle. The foot pegs are a little bit lower. Again, the frames are similar, but the, I believe it's the head stay is stretched out a little bit forward towards the front of the bike to give it a little bit more relaxed steering geometry. Also make room for the increased suspension travel and that uh, 19 inch front wheel. And the seat height on this uh, Scrambler X is uh, it's right around 33 inches. So pretty big boys uh, size seat height. We're on the Speed 400, it's right around 31 inches. And uh, right away, you on the Scrambler X, you feel like you're on a full-size motorcycle, but it's still relatively light at a claim 395 pounds. Each model has its own suspension tuning as well, or valving. So the uh, the, the uh, Roadster, the Speed 400, is going to be a little bit stiffer, at, while the, the Scrambler X is going to have a little bit softer suspension for that uh, off-road riding. Yeah get a little more comfort absorbing bumps and bruises and rocks in the road and uh, just in the first little photo pass we did around the roundabout right over here I could feel going from one bike to the other I could feel that the the Scrambler X feels a little bit softer there's a little bit more weight transfer when you're going uh, on and off throttle where the uh, the speed that wasn't as noticeable all right we've been cruising on this uh, sort of highway road been doing roughly 70 miles per hour indicated the whole time and what I'm really impressed by is the fact that you don't feel like you're on a little small lightweight single cylinder engine cruising at 70 miles per hour it's not very buzzy 
and you don't you're not super high up in the rpm range you still have plenty of uh plenty of power and gear to work with so uh it's funny i kind of forgot for a little bit that i was on you know a lightweight uh sort of entry level uh single cylinder motorcycle both because of that engine having you know plenty of legs to carry you well past 70 miles per hour comfortably but then also just the uh the big sort of the big footprint this bike has especially the x with the tall seat height the open ergonomics you uh it really gives you a a big bike uh experience all right here we go we're getting into the twisties it rolls onto the side of the tire very nicely i like to lug bikes so always kind of short shifting and even on some of these tighter roads we're in a third gear right now and it comes off the out of the hole pretty nicely as i mentioned earlier throttle response is very direct it can be a little bit notchy down low like when we we're going through the city and stuff it felt on and off throttle especially in second gear was a little bit notchy but uh once you kind of get past that 3000 rpm mark it's really nice and smooth man i this bike this is fun i like this big wide handlebar it uh makes it nice to get leverage and uh put the thing onto the side of the tire the disc is larger than on the roadster this v400 it uses the same vibri four piston caliper up front but on the scrambler 400 this model right here it has a 320 millimeter rotor with a less aggressive brake pad compound the roadster the speed 400 uses a the same caliper but a 300 millimeter rotor with a more aggressive uh brake pad compound i've been spending most of the day on this scrambler and uh, i did notice going from one bike to the other just for a quick photo pass the difference in that brake compound the speed 400 the roadster definitely has a more aggressive front brake feel but uh that's what they're going for and it's not that the scrambler 400 brake won't get the job done it's just uh it's something you notice when you're uh pulling on that that lever so third gear we're going pretty slow really smooth throttle response right there you can really modulate it nicely mid corner roll on the throttle wow look at this beautiful landscape this is amazing it's just really nice quick decisive gearbox quick shift the throws feel really short so it's easy to bake gears really quickly it's got this slipper uh, assist clutch with a nice light lever pull so the newer uh, riders are really going to appreciate that uh, this scrambler if you really want to get ambitious in the twisties it will definitely do it so far i haven't had any problems with the suspension being too soft or wallowing granted i do weigh you know around 120 to 125 pounds without gear on so i am on the lighter side but like right there like you see like getting on the brakes it has nice hold up it doesn't have a lot of fork dive i really appreciate that but it still has some nice supple dampening at the top of the stroke to absorb some of the bumps and bruises on this road this one's been pretty smooth we had some bumps on the other roads but yeah really nice package so far really enjoying it uh, i've ridden both the honda crf 300l and the kawasaki klx 300 recently and those are some really nice lightweight uh dual sports really fun really approachable and i think someone who's looking at one of those bikes maybe but doesn't see themselves being a super hardcore off-roader but wants something that does have off-road performance we'll see once we get into this dirt with this bike but this thing has some pretty good performance so far on the pavement and then if you want to have that cool steve mcqueen style really a classic a modern classic look it uh this definitely delivers on that see how it is standing up yeah pretty nice rider triangle maybe a little bit wide in between the legs i mean but again that's if you're you know comparing it to a dirt bike or something but nice uh nice position standing up the reach to the bars is nice really puts you in a good uh agile sort of aggressive off-road position i like that so something I, I will know i'm not feeling it on every corner but it's happened to me a couple times where sometimes we kind of felt it yeah right there i don't know if that's the tire or what 
maybe the wheel size suspension I'm not quite sure but there is this weird sort of sometimes when you go to really tip it in and get some you know a little more aggressive lean angle on the front end there feels like this little step off like it you start to roll on the tire and it kind of falls and you almost have to catch it again I have kind of noticed that again not every corner but it's happened to me a couple of times where it does it kind of catches you off and spooked me a couple of times I felt like the front was pushing but it's just this it kind of rolls off the tire a little bit weird when you start to tip it in initially so that's something I've uh, noticed a couple of times today so we'll uh, yeah we'll we'll see if that persists just had lunch spent the whole day so far on the scrambler 400x and now we're getting a real first taste of the uh, the speed 400 and uh, really excited to ride this thing one of my one of my favorite motorcycles is the uh, the speed 1200 the speed twin 1200 love that motorcycle and this thing looks just like it let's get a sound check I don't know if you can hear this that well but nice little broppiness to it I like it already you can feel this thing has just a little bit more of a a roadster feel you know it's definitely a little more agile it leans it uh, drops into the corner a little bit easier less suspension travel a little bit stiffer suspension and then also having that uh, a 17 inch front wheel where the scrambler's got a 19 inch and then also too it has the uh, you know real uh, road tires yeah be interesting too how the the gearing the gearing slightly different this uh, this this Speed 400 has a little bit uh, taller gearing than the, uh, the Scrambler. So, and I found that the Scrambler was doing really good carrying third gear, even at low speed corners like this one. So let's try it, drop down into third, see how it uh, picks up the throttle. Felt really similar to the, the Scrambler, really nice, even in third gear comes off the out of the hole really nicely I definitely get having a better uh, front-end feeling on this bike than I was on the scrambler the scrambler sometimes had a little bit of a vague feeling on the front end right there I just got on the front brake decent it's nice this uh, the suspension's pretty taut not a lot of weight transfer which I like and the front brake definitely has a little bit more bite than it, the uh, the scrambler does first just impression I think I'm liking the speed a little bit more than the uh, the scrambler just for its uh, feels a little bit more uh, glued to the ground in these twisties feeling pretty planted right now which is always nice like this handlebar you have still some pretty good leverage it's obviously uh, it's a little bit narrower than the uh, on the scrambler but still has good uh, uh, good leverage for manipulating the bike this bike is 20 pounds lighter and, and I mean, again, part, partially the suspension, the front wheel, the tires, but this thing just feels a little bit more agile, a little bit more willing to get on this side of the tire. So I like that. Yeah, the mid-range is nice. That's, that's uh, you know, in some of these tight corners, you have the, 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 the low end. It rolls on, and then let's see, right around, what is that, four or 5,000 RPM, it really, you feel that punch from five to 8,000 RPM, really, that mid-range comes on nicely. Cause you know, I'm in third gear right now still, and that's a pretty good acceleration. The Speed 400 is just quite a bit more capable on the twisty pavement. It's a lot more confidence inspiring. It feels more planted. It's, it leads into the corners easier. It's just a little bit more flickable. And then you also have that stronger front brake that, uh, again just makes it more of a just you know more just a better performing bike on the pavement i think really it's going to come down to where do you see yourself riding what kind of riding do you like to do if you're not really an off-roader then uh you know the scrambler might not be the choice for you but then also if you really like that scrambler st scrambler styling and you're okay with compromising just a little bit of on-road performance to get that scrambler styling, then hey, I, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with your decision. 
where we were riding similar stuff on the Scrambler 400X. I just, the front tire was just giving me a lot of weird uh, vague feeling and it was kind of slipping and sliding sometimes. And it just, it zapped my confidence. And then we switched at lunch. I'm now on the Speed 400 and riding that same kind of similar stuff. And man, I just, I just my confidence is back. I can just feel like I can just lay the thing over in a corner and it's not going to do anything weird. Where before the scrambler, at the beginning of the day, before I had any moments, you know, like I had the confidence and then I had a couple corners where the front end started tucking on me. And that time, it happened a couple times where I didn't really feel like we were really at much of a lean angle. We were kind of cruising and yeah, yeah it was just kind of weird and it, it took the confidence away. And now on this Speed 400, it's back. I just feel like I can put the thing anywhere, crank it over and everything's going to be okay. I really, really am enjoying my time on this uh, the Speed 400. Really great bike. It, it just reminds me so, I feel like I'm on the uh, the 1200, which is one of my all time favorite motorcycles. So it's just, it's given me the same experience just with less torque and less horsepower. All right, we're doing a little gas stop right now. So let's let's uh, check out the, the dash. You got your analog on for miles per hour and stuff like that. Little uh, LCD display right there. So it's showing engine off. Uh, you got these, the info button. Hmm. Let's try turning on, maybe that's. Okay, so trip one, trip two, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see how you can turn. Traction control, I think that's what that is. Let's see, hold it down. Is that gonna turn it off? Yep, there it goes. So you just, you get over with this uh, info button. You find where it says TTC on, hold it down for a couple seconds, now it's off. So, yeah, it's just like the uh, the Speed 1200, very similar. So, all right, cool. Look at we're going 20 miles per hour in fourth gear, and it's really got a nice little low-end grunt that can kind of torque around this town. I like that. And I've, I've noticed that uh, when you if you're running a gear high, the uh, the little bit of that notchiness with the throttle uh, is not as uh, noticeable. So fourth gear with that 30 miles per hour. It's very smooth. Let's see, fourth gear on this roundabout, rolling on the throttle, super smooth, very, very smooth. It's it, it's more just in second and first gear that you have that notchiness. This thing's got pretty decent passing power. Let's see if we get a, an opening right here. So I'm in fifth gear. I'm just rolling on hard in second, or excuse me, six. Not bad. I went from 70 to 80 pretty quick to get around that van. Not bad at all. And of course, if I would have gave it at least one or two downshifts, it would have happened sooner. I just kind of wanted to see that top gear uh, roll on. Pretty good, man. This thing's got legs, that's for sure. Both of them do. It's pretty crazy because they, they have a lot of similarities as far as uh, they share a lot of the same bones. But they really deliver very different uh, riding experiences. Feel very different uh, in motion. So, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's really tough. It's not just one that it's not just styling that uh, separates the two. And yeah, uh, having a little bit more of a, a dirt off-road background, I came in thinking I would kind of lean towards the scrambler but I think as we're putting a wrap on the day if I had to uh, spend my money on one of these bikes I personally I think I'm going with the uh, the speed 400 right here not only is it a little cheaper but that's really not the point the, the the reason why I would go with this bike it's not the price it's just it's that on-road performance man I really felt really good on this bike in the twisties where the scrambler I uh, I, I admittedly didn't feel very awesome. I started the day feeling fine and then had a few uh, scares with the front end. And Yeah, so if you're trying to make a decision between these two motorcycles, this Triumph Speed 400 and the Scrambler 400X, I think it's really going to come down to how much you plan on riding off-road and how much you value the styling of each. This is that classic Roadster. I mean, the Speed 1200, the Speed Twin 1200 is one of my just favorite, all-time favorite bikes. 
because of that tour character the look of it the agility of it i just really uh, fell in love with that motorcycle and this 400 reminds me of it both in an aesthetics from an aesthetic standpoint but also from performance it really reminds me of that bike other than you know the power delivery obviously a single cylinder 398 cc motorcycle or engine is not going to offer the same feeling as a 1200 cc twin but uh yeah so i think it'll come down to what you want to what you want to look like you want to look like james bond or you want to look like steve mcqueen and then also do you uh do you plan on doing dirt and if not maybe the speed 400 you'll be happier with for the on-road performance but uh yeah either way you're uh you're gonna and even if you don't plan on riding a whole lot of off-road and you're okay with maybe that little bit of performance the on-road performance compromise from the the larger front wheel on the scrambler the less aggressive front brake the little bit heavier steering and the heavier wet weight of it but it's it's not dramatic you know so if you're okay with that uh and and you're willing to compromise that for the look of the scrambler 400 yeah you're going to be happy you're not going to be disappointed in your decision and then vice versa if you really are not someone who rides off-road or maybe you've never ridden off-road maybe you're you're looking to buy your first motorcycle this this 400 the speed 400 will be a, you'll be happy with that purchase i really believe so other than that that's going to wrap up this onboard review of the 2024 triumph speed 400 and triumph scrambler 400x of course there'll be a link in the description for a written article go more in depth about both motorcycles kind of break down the notes i've been taking throughout the day yeah if you like what we're doing hit that like button subscribe let me know in the comments down below are you a james bond guy or are you a steve mcqueen guy i thought i was a steve mcqueen guy but uh today i'm feeling like bond james bond so let me know what you think in the comments below we'll see you in the next episode thank you guys